Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about cameras for the home and business. I talk about IP cameras quite a lot and you can probably tell just because of how many little cameras are dotted around the background here and today I want to talk about an affordable solution from the guys at Anchor. It's probably the third or fourth camera from them that I've talked about on the channel in the last couple of years and this is an external camera but it's quite unique. It's one of few cameras that I've talked about that they are a AI cameras. Now, AI cameras are slightly different to regular IP cameras. Let me explain. This here is an affordable, kind of budget, non-smart camera, and it is a general camera that's connected to an Ethernet network, or it can be wireless. I think this is both. This is a Heme Vision 203. It's about 30 nicker. Um, and this is a camera that you connect uh, to your local area network and it's accessible over the internet, accessible over the localized network and generally always via a mobile phone app. And the app will then get information that is triggered from sensors uh, built into the camera that are based on a pixel level. So if a certain number of pixels changes, it can denote movement and there it will report something has happened to the end user on their phone and they can react accordingly. Now, more budget end cameras and non-smart cameras are affordable these days for a reason. And that's because although you don't pay for a lot of it in terms of the financial cost, you will pay for it in time. Whether it's because um, a leaf in a tree moved a bit and then suddenly the camera's got, oh my God, it's an intruder. Or it will be the simple case that once the camera, which can have night vision, where it will be detected night and day and infrared will click on, automatically the back end of the camera or the software connecting to the camera will suddenly go, what big change, alert, alert, and you get loads of false readings. And it's for reasons like these that smart cameras exist. Smart cameras give you the ability, had, or they have the ability built into them to identify the difference between certain stimuli factors. So rather than just looking at a picture and then suddenly notice that these pixels changed, it's smart enough to know what kind of changes there are. And some smart cameras are so advanced now that they will allow you to tell the difference between different things that they see. Now, smart AI cameras do come in two kind of core buying kind of alternatives. You've got the very, very high end. These are ones up from companies like Axis. These cost about three, four, five, six hundred quid a pop. And these cameras can get really specific. They can identify people, things, items, and they can create subroutines and identifying factors just like them and say, in this area of the camera, if an item is there and it is X, Y, or Z kind of item, I want the notification. If it's not X, Y, Z, a moped, a handbag, or whatever, then it won't alert you. Now, these cameras require a huge amount of hardware inside them, and home users will never utilize any of that potential. The other kind of smart AI camera is one that has preset values inside which are very specific to the user environment and therefore doesn't need to be so diverse and this is a very very good example this is the anchor ai floodlight external camera so this device here will give you the ability to have a camera outside of your home that not only will send you notifications to your mobile device to say if someone's trying to break into your home or if certain intrusion detections have been triggered but also has a big old huge LED light that will shine the spotlight on potential burglars or intruders generally. It's obviously uh, designed for externally, although you can use it indoors, it would seem weird to use it as such. Now, it is a 1080p camera, an HD camera there, with uh, I believe the frame rate can be adjusted, I think at its height, it's 25, 30 frames per second, hopefully it's on screen, and it also has two-way audio, which is always good, but it is not a PoE camera. So for those of you that have been looking for an external camera that is PoE, power over Ethernet, this may not be the camera for you, but I think I've rabbit on for long enough, let's take a look inside. Sorry for the break in recording there guys, I'll be honest, I could not get into this box for love nor money. So I got myself some scissors and we're having a bloody good go at this. So, let's have a look and see what we've got here. I mean, fair play to Anchor here, they are really going out of their way to make sure this is not tampered with in transit. And by the way, use a real knife, not scissors, come on, rookie L. So, here we go, uh, before we even get inside, let's take a look at the external box. And again, I'm going to try and make sure the light from... Um, uh, the studio camera is not going to ruin it too much. And again, lots of information there about the internals of this device. It's, you know, fairly standard. It is controlled by the mobile phone app. I'm not sure if there is a desktop overview for this. We will be doing a full software overview of this as well as a testing of those LED lights in a future video coming very, very soon. So it'd be nice to see just how good that is. 
we open it up, we've got our little bag here of accessories. Let's see what we get. Inside, we have got a sticker that says that you can just stick that to your house to say that you're protected by anchor security. Not 100% certain about that. Um, again, a little thank you. I always quite like when you get those inside. And we've got our instruction manual here, which is actually quite nice. Pretty detailed. All the instructions are kind of there. It's quite quite graphical, quite a nice glossy book. It's in fairly well prompted English, gotta say. Quite impressed. Um, on top of that, if we go a little deeper, we can see what else is inside. And this is quite a large camera. That pretty much is straight off the bat there. We put that box there. We can see the template for if you're gonna wall mount this camera, which this is pretty much a wall mounted camera non-stop. We've also removed the other side. We can take a good look at what looks like a very, very impressive and industrial looking camera. So if we remove that bagging there, we can have a look at the sensor that it arrives inside, which rotates there. And we have got the, inf uh, the LED light there for the top. So if we rotate that around, we can move that into position and take a good look at what this looks like in reality. So there's our camera. There's the LED, six individual LEDs there built into the top. And at the bottom, we've got quite a comprehensive sensor system built into which I'm going to talk about in just a little bit. We've also got the rear panel there for wall mounting the device directly there and again the power does require a little bit of wiring this is not a normal typical level device this is going to require a little bit of extra work getting this into the wall mounting so do bear in mind this is like putting on a new sconce on the wall this isn't mains connection this is going to require a little bit more work from you guys at the other end so do forgive me if it takes an extra few days to get the video up and running about this to get this wall mounted and ready for the next production video but the camera itself is incredibly high quality density build i've got to say it's very rugged um it's ip55 weatherproof so it's not quite up there in the sixes and i can see why just because of that rear mount in there they're not going to be able to classify this as ip66 because although this is going to be flush it's going to be very much based on the way you um install this device and you're not really able to get cables like these wall mounted without an opening so do bear that in mind now the sensor on the front is where pretty much all the the magic happens first and foremost the front of the device does feature uh, motion sensitivity as well as pir or passive infrared and what that means is rather than relying on just simple movement as described earlier on with like the odd pixel change in its field of view 180 degrees uh, field of view PIR means it recognizes heat signatures, very fine heat signatures, but it makes all the difference between the motion. So the movement of a tree is not going to register the same as a person or a hand moving in front of its field of view. That's one of the main reasons why PIR sensitivity has far surpassed that of simple motion detection. And in a modern age of everything becoming more expensive and things get more efficient, you are noticing PII is appearing on the majority of IP cameras, both internally and externally. Now, in the event of an intrusion, uh, obviously, as mentioned, you've got the LED lights there that will kick in and blast light into the area of effect. But on top of that, there is an inbuilt alarm, a 100 decibel alarm that can be triggered manually or automatically based on the field of view. Now, my advice to you is once you get this set up, Double check that because you are going to piss your neighbours right off if an alarm goes off and it's a false alarm like a squirrel or a cat. Which, you know, cats be cats. You've seen my other videos, but the fact still remains. Maybe bench test some things before you start running a 100 decibel alarm. Um, on top of that, it has um, detection of an area of effect up to 30 feet as well as night detection, uh, night vision as well. Now, much like other anchor cameras, even more affordable ones like the little desktop HD that we've got up here, you can set an area of effect. You can create uh, in the entire scope of view within the software, you can say any movement within this box is what I want triggered. And this will allow you to do that as well as in conjunction with the PIR sensitivity and motion detection in general. Now, you've got audio in and out, so you can set it up in a doorway if you like. And then if there's a trigger, you can have it so that they can, you can hear what they are saying, you can hear what they are saying, oh, sorry, yeah, you, they can hear what you are saying even, and you can use it as a means of securing entry in and out of the premises. Although you will have to use a 
uh, you know, an anchor door lock, uh, a smart door lock in conjunction with this and the software. Now, with regards to recordings in your local area of environment, you have two means of recording. There's an SD card slot built into a screw area on the base of the device there, and that screw it lets you install up to a 64 gig SD card. On top of that, it also supports cloud and a subscription service from Anchor. I'm not in love with the idea of subscription surveillance. I personally like utilizing a network attached storage device as an MVR or CCTV platform for all of my storage. But there's no denying that everyone has access to hundreds and hundreds of pounds of storage in, in terms of a NAS or in terms of... Um, just the media that goes inside the hard drives and more so you're finding a lot of cameras like, like this they're asking you to kind of make a choice and this does not support network attached storage utilization you can't um stream the scope and field of surveillance on this onto a nas and its recording capabilities this is cloud or sd card there isn't a third option now if you're not going to store your recordings you don't need either because you can still access the camera live you're just not going to have anywhere to retain recordings although you will still get all of those alerts and the smart ai recognition can be along the case of if you don't want it to recognize people but you want it to recognize vehicles this is intelligent enough to know that it's just not going to have some of the core um, ai support that the higher end cameras such as facial recognition, not just that it is a face, but who that face is, isn't going to be supported on this device. Now, another area that may be an area of contention for you guys out there between choosing this camera and an alternative is the fact that it's only 2.4 gigahertz in terms of frequency. It doesn't have dual, pan, dual band support, so none of your 5 gigahertz here. And the reason that might be an area of contention is some hardware for surveillance and indeed network equipment is either fixed to five gigahertz or will require a device for setup such as a mobile phone some modern mobile phones have difficulty communicating with 2.4 gigahertz devices because they keep automatically switching to five they communicate with the device via the wi-fi in your home but if or your business environment but if the wi-fi isn't communicating with this over 2.4 your mobile phone can't communicate with it now there are ways around that and anchor do have a means for you to directly set up with the device but it's nowhere near as fluid as utilizing standard wi-fi and of course we'll try to include that in the setup video of this camera i like the build quality of it there's no avoiding that it is really nice it comes with a one-year warranty which i know a lot of you think mm, minimum two and again at this price point uh, you know just shy of a hundred pounds including tax it's not the most expensive outdoor camera but what i will say is included included in that one year of manufacturer's warranty is a lifetime of software coverage and warranty which a lot of companies are ever so slightly reluctant to give sometimes because software is so fluid it can change so much along with os's but they do include that which is quite nice now like i say my only downers for this camera uh number one is that 2.4 gigahertz double check your frequencies that you're going to be utilizing with both for setup and general use because that might be an area of contention for you and the other area being the fact that it's not poe it's not power over ethernet i don't even mind that it's not ip66 given the circumstances but a camera like this would be so much easier to set up if it was poe because it was poe all you'd need to do is connect to the rear of this with a poe camera a uh, poe cable into a poe switch a power over ethernet switch and it'll be so much easier to set up perhaps that that light requires more power than poe can deliver or perhaps it is simply to keep that price point down but apart from that at 100 notes i'm really looking forward to seeing what this camera can do and i'm looking forward to showing you guys in the next video so if you're interested in getting hold of this go to the link in the description if you want to learn more about IP cameras, then do subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of IP camera content, and I do talk about a lot about surveillance and security with and without a network attached storage device. Click like if you've enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.